Hi, my name is Ryan Verrett, and I'm a product manager at National Instruments. And today, I want to talk to you about NI Flex Rio and peer-to-peer -peer streaming to and from our RF vector signal analyzers and vector signal generators. Now, NI Flex Rio consists of user programmable FPGA modules coupled to I.O. adapter modules. But in our chassis here, we don't actually have an adapter module on the front of the NI Flex Rio FPGA module. Instead, we're using a unique capability called peer-to-peer -peer streaming which lets us send data into or out of the FPGA module at rates up to 800 megabytes per second. So in our demo today, we're going to be streaming from our RF vector signal analyzer to our FPGA module or from our FPGA module to our vector signal generator. Our first application is a frequency domain trigger. And in this application, we are streaming every single sample acquired from by our RF vector signal analyzer to our NI Flex Rio FPGA module for processing. The processing is basically a window followed by an FFT and then a comparison against a mask. Uh, and you can see in the top graph, uh, in red, we're actually looking at the data from the vector signal analyzer, not continuously. We're basically uh, snooping the data um, every few hundred microseconds or milliseconds. Uh, but then in white, uh, we have our mask. And every time we change the mask, we, we re-download it to the FPGA. Uh, so the FPGA is continuously comparing against this mask. Now, if we drop our mask low enough uh, so that it um, goes below the amplitude of our signal, you can see our application completes. And the bottom graph in blue is updated uh, with the last record acquired by the vector signal analyzer. And basically what happens is the FPGA module sends out a trigger over the PXI backplane to the vector signal analyzer, which then uh, finishes its acquisition. And uh, we display that at the bottom graph in blue. Now if we run our application again, uh, we can actually change the signal content this time. And instead of uh, changing our trigger threshold, we can actually change the amplitude of the signal that we're generating, uh, going from negative 20 dBm to just 0 dBm. And this will also generate a trigger. Now what's interesting is that the most recently acquired data in red uh, doesn't actually have any signal. That's because the vector signal generator actually stops generating, switches frequency, then starts generating again. Uh, so we caught a, a snapshot when the vector signal analyzer or generator was not generating. But in the bottom graph in blue, you can see that this is a very non-ideal spectrum. Uh, and this is due to the fact that we triggered exactly when the vector signal generator started generating. Um, and our trigger position was 50%, meaning half the samples before were of uh, no generation. And then half the samples after were of this uh, sinusoid that we're generating at 1 gigahertz. So uh, you can actually see the onset of that signal caused the, the non-ideal spectrum here that you can see in the bottom graph in blue. So in addition to our basic frequency domain trigger, uh, we can extend these capabilities to build a real-time spectrum analyzer. Here we have the same idea. Our spectral mask now is constant across the frequency, so we're just calling it a threshold. Uh, but this could be any arbitrary spectral mask uh, with whatever resolution uh, you have on your FFT. In this case, it's uh, 1024 elements long. So uh, if we drop our threshold to the noise floor of our vector signal analyzer, um, as we get close, you can see the number of threshold exceptions increasing. So instead of sending out a trigger, we're now incrementing a value um, on the FPGA. Uh, so you can see that behavior here as, as we drop our threshold. Uh, in addition, we are retaining the peak value of the FFT um, uh, across time. And we're, we're going to use that to implement a maximum hold feature. So now we have the, the top graph in pink. Uh, which is the maximum value that we've ever seen. Uh, if we lower our intensity, you should be able to see that a little bit better. Um, that's kind of the average noise value there, uh, and then the peak noise value below. So if we actually generate a signal here, uh, we're going to generate a series of tones with our vector signal generator. You can see that each of these tones updates the maximum value and increases the number of threshold exceptions, uh, so quite rapidly, actually. Uh, and we can also reset our maximum value in the middle there. Um, and you can see that each of these new tones uh, causes a discontinuity in the frequency domain, um, but also updates our maximum hold value. And again, we could reset that there. And we could see the, the max value um, of each of those tones that we generated. 
So this real-time spectrum analyzer is useful if you need to detect any signals that are intermittent in time and may not be present um, at a given frequency at any given time. In our last application, we're actually using peer-to-peer -peer data streaming with both our vector signal analyzer and vector signal generator. On our FPGA, we're generating a pseudo-random bit sequence of data. Uh, we're packetizing that, modulating it, sending it out over our vector signal generator to our vector signal analyzer, where we receive it, demodulate it, uh, depacketize it, and then compare that pseudo-random data to a reference set of pseudo-random data uh, and log our bit errors. Now, we're also simulating a channel in this demo uh, by adding noise. So each of these tests on the x-axis uh, in the graph in white at the top uh, represents a different noise power, where the y-axis represents the log of the bit error rate of the data that we're receiving. And on the bottom graph in red, you should be able to see the noise level rising um, as we increase our noise power. Uh, now, you'll start to see a significant increase in bit errors as that noise level gets higher and higher, uh, and that's what we're seeing right now. Uh, so this is actually being performed continuously on the FPGA, um, and we're actually sending data out at 25 mega symbols per second uh, with differential 8 PSK modulation. Uh, so we're performing millions of bit error tests per second, uh, and you can see as our noise power gets to the reference level, uh, we actually get complete um, errors. Uh, so our bit error rate is, is basically 100%. So thank you for viewing our demos. If you'd like to learn more about NI FlexRio or peer-to-peer -peer data streaming, please visit ni.com slash FlexRio.